So guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today is not a very fun day. I actually had a fun day planned, what was funny. I wanted to go to Stone Mountain. They had that Daisy Festival yeah. thing. But, very big, change of plans. I've been crying. Um, if you guys are new here, I have a dog named Lou. He's a Boston Terrier, he's seven. He, like in the last year, He's had like episodes of like falling, stumbling, dragging of the feet, and we took him to the vet. He got an x-ray. He has like a disc issue in his neck. So we've always done like medical intervention and it's worked out fine. But last night he like got really, really bad to the point where he couldn't walk. Like he would tr walk a couple steps and then he would fall. He would try and eat and he would fall. He was just falling over a lot. Um, so we came to my nose is red jeez um we came over to an emergency vet that our that our primary vet um like recommended and they have a neurologist and we have like a referral for them and stuff so we came over here and like he's still doing like exactly the same as he was yesterday um like shivering because of the pain and stuff so um we just left him there they did the initial like vitals and stuff with him but for the neurologist to see him they're gonna take like about two hours so we're going ahead and going to a bagel place and we're gonna eat so i'll show you guys that this is far i would have come last night but Auden was working a night shift and that's when he got really bad um i had the baby and this place is like 45 minutes away from us so i couldn't like at nine o'clock at night i don't know i just i wouldn't have been able to so um we're gonna go to that bagel place and then we're gonna come back and he's probably gonna stay overnight because they can't do the mri today they're gonna have to do it tomorrow morning so the vet just said that he can stay and so that is the update for right now and then it's after the MRI seeing if he's a candidate for surgery, neck surgery. I don't know what that entails. I don't know what they do for the neck. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll know tomorrow, essentially. Um, so, yeah. I, I like It's so sad. We're coming home without the Poochie. But I guess not like he's, you know, rest in peace. He's just staying the night at a very expensive hotel. But <sighs> whatever, that's up different right now. We're gonna go eat some bagels and then we're gonna go ahead and if there's like a park we could just sit at. Or I don't know, because that's not gonna take two hours that bagel place. We'll see what else we do until we have to come get well not get Mr. Lou, but get an update on Mr. Lou. Okay hey guys, so the first part of this video was filmed a couple of days ago and I'm just gonna come and kind of rehash everything that went down. So I filmed that first part on Sunday and then today it is Thursday. Today it's Thursday. So Lou got back home yesterday. So I'm just gonna, gonna go through everything that went on in these like four days. Okay, so you guys saw that we left. We were waiting for the neurologist to like evaluate him and then we got back home. I would I was gonna sit him on my lap for the video, but he's in his crate and he can only get out of his crate to go pee and then straight back in. So I don't want him to think he's gonna be able to pee because it's raining outside. So yeah. So we get back to the hospital. So it was a it was a pet hospital, so I'm just gonna say the hospital. Um and the neurologist saw him and she said that she had concerns like yes it could be his spinal disc issue but she was thinking that there was also something neurological happening um that sometimes it happens when dogs get like cancer and like it spreads and whatever so but they will not know until the blood work comes back and the mri gets done and the mri couldn't get done on saturday so she gave us the option of taking him home because he wasn't in a critical condition that like he was going to pass away if we took him home but then i can call and make an appointment and she told me that the appointments were like a month out for like mri neurology 
but if he stayed overnight it was still since it was an emergency case he would get first priority and 100 percent get an mri done the next day being monday um like 100 percent, and then on monday he would get the surgery to for the disc if it was necessary so we went ahead and we left him there sunday night i will say i have cried so much in the last like four days like even yesterday when i saw him i started crying so there's just been there's been a lot of tears a, a bunch of tears um so we left i got a call on monday from the neurologist they did the mri and they got like his blood work back and everything came out like clean red blood cell count was perfect um white blood cell count was perfect like what was it what's those the flow the i don't know the other thing that has to do with cancer with your blood came out clean um they checked the mri and the mri was like perfect except for his um disc so the disc that were chronic and herniated were his c3 and his c4 so those are in his neck um so they went ahead and they took him since they have to put him under anesthesia for the mri they took him directly to get surgery and then that took a couple of hours on monday so i was just like distraught like the whole time because i will say it was really scary because when they like gave us the quote for everything um i kind of almost had a heart attack over the price because if you guys watch my videos or if you're new here um my fiance and i moved to georgia it's about to become a year and like two months um and i haven't worked since we moved here i was pregnant i had my baby she is turning four months old next week so i haven't worked so we are a i'm a stay-at-home mom and we're like a single income household so like we have enough to like survive and live pretty comfortably but we were not expecting this number in the price so he spent four days in the hospital the full surgery and all that stuff it came out to twelve thousand dollars which obviously we paid because i'm sitting here and i'm telling you that he had the surgery so yeah we weren't prepared for that i wasn't prepared for that i was genuinely thinking it was going to be like six thousand at most not double but like we pulled through and like we figured out how to essentially pay for it um so yeah just saying that i think having pets is such a beautiful and amazing thing but it's so expensive also so it's like if you're not financially set for it like it's so hard and if you don't have options like it's just it's hard so yeah let's keep on going he was okay well saying before they had me sign a dnr and that was just like too much for me i i knew that he was gonna need the surgery in my heart but it kind of just lets you know how risky it is and like your pet could actually die going under anesthesia like just anesthesia is so dangerous i don't know so i was just i was just distraught over everything so we're gonna fast forward again to monday he was in surgery he got out of surgery i got a call that the surgery went really well they removed the disc that needed to be removed he did really well during surgery there was not any excessive bleeding um they were transferring him into the icu and to start waking him up and that they would give me a call the next day but i was like i am gonna call later on they're a 24-hour clinic if you guys are in georgia and you need i guess emergency pet services they're 24 7 which is great um so it's called blue pearl i personally went to blue pearl sandy springs and i will say i've had a pretty good experience every time i call they were really attentive like you could call and they will give you an update as many times as you want on your pet and they don't get annoyed or upset when they say they're gonna call you they call you so that's what i can say about that um so i kind of called on monday i would say like at eight i just wanted to see you know how he was doing because he finished surgery at about like 3 30 so i just kind of wanted to see how he woke up like how he was doing outside of that 
Um, so I called and they told me that he was doing really well. He was standing really good. Like he wasn't scuffing, like dragging his feet as much. Um, and he was being able to like stand on his own and not like topple over. So, and he ate all his food, which was great. She told me that that's a good sign because usually when they get out of surgery with like the anesthesia, all the medication that they're on, they don't really want to eat food, but he ate. So that's perfect. Um, then Tuesday, I got a call in the morning. The, the um, neurologist went ahead and saw him again and he said that he was doing like really well. If he continues this way, um, I would be able to get him the next day, which would have been t yesterday, which would be tomorrow, which was Wednesday. <laughs> um so that they would give me a call the next day but i was like i need like an update i need another one so he was doing really well in the morning and he was like peeing he was doing great um i went ahead and i called more or less like at eight o'clock again and the guy just told me the same thing that he was doing really really well he was eating he was peeing he hadn't pooped since surgery but they told me that that's normal he still hasn't pooped but the doctor told me that it could take about like three to five days before he poops so like to not really be alarmed like it's coming it's happening he's eating so he's gonna he's gonna poop um if anything i can put some pumpkin puree in his food and we've always kind of done that when he kind of gets in like a no pooping stage and it helps a lot. So I might do that for dinner tonight. Um, so yeah, I thought he was doing really well. Um, so yesterday we got a call and they were like, what time do you want to come pick him up? He's doing really well. Like we feel 100% sure that he couldn't go home. So we went ahead yesterday at one o'clock and got him. We got back like at 3 p.m. probably. Um, but like the moment, they went over all his care instructions. He's on... He's on two medications, but they gave me three medications just in case. So he's on a pain medication, a steroid, and then what else? Pain medication, steroid. He has um, like an anti-anxiety, like relaxing tranquilizer one that we haven't put him on yet because it hasn't been necessary. But maybe we have to, maybe we don't, we'll see. And he has a fentanyl patch on his side for pain. I have to take that off in two days. So... They went over all his care instructions. He basically needs to stay in his crate 23 hours a day because they did remove disc from his neck. Um, so it's like a lot of like just rest is what she told me. He needs to go out to pee, um, just to pee and poop. No excessive walking. Like there is no roaming. There is no toys. There is no nothing. She told me he can't even have toys in his crate for right now. Um, so yeah his medication right now is every i'm keeping it every 12 hours they told me he was doing good with that at the hospital so i'm gonna just keep it as that if i see him getting a little bit anxious in his crate i will she told me she goes it's not something that i have to like wean him off of if you see him anxious if you see him like really getting stir crazy you can give him one and if he's fine for days after that you don't need to like be on top of giving him the medication it's mostly like as needed so that's great um but the moment that he walked oh i have to do physical therapy with him too they recommended for me to take him to like a rehab center i was like looking into it so we might get like a quote on that and see more or less how much it's gonna cost oh my god actually they're calling me right now literally blue pearl sandy springs give me a second so we he was like walking so well when he walked into the room it was just like a night and day difference to how like he's been, he's literally walking better post surgery, like one to two days than he has in a year since like these crises started happening. It's just, it's nuts. Like how much of a difference it's already made. Um, so I'm gonna look into the rehab center to see how much it's gonna cost um, us. Maybe we'll do like one or two sessions um, and I will do like the rest of the physical therapy at home. I got like a pamphlet on it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. I will put you on there, and um, if anything comes up between now and then that you might need, please just give us a call back, okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Put that in my calendar. Damn, 8.30 a.m. It's like 4.30. 
45 minutes away. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, actually. I'm going to have to go with the baby alone. Damn, if it would have been Monday, that would have been perfect. Because Audrey would have been home. We'll see. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, so for some, I don't know. You would think spinal surgery and like on his neck, he would have the incision at the back of his neck. It's actually in the front here. I don't know how that works. I don't know, but it's in the front, the incision, and he's walking a lot better. He's in his crate sleeping right now. I'm not gonna take him out, but I will show you guys him at least. He's on the mend, so we have an appointment, as you saw, in two weeks. That's basically to like check his incision. He has staples to like remove the staples, and then they just wanna kind of see how he's doing. Um, I don't think I'll do the rehab up until that point because I want him to be like as rested and not like overdo it, I feel. I am gonna start that physical therapy today with him. I need to take out the pamphlet from the folder they gave me. I'll probably just do a couple. I mean, he's like just out of surgery, so I'm just gonna do a little bit and just kind of, I don't know, we're on the mend. I'm just, I'm really happy that he's home. I can literally cry talking about it. I'm just really happy that he's home. He's on the mend. Like the one thing that was wrong with him, God willing, all fingers and toes and hairs crossed. Like we got, what has really been wrong with him in the last year? And you know, hopefully this is just the beginning to a really, well, he's seven, he's about to be eight, but like a really long and healthy life for him and just being happy and like pain-free because obviously he was in so much pain having two herniated discs and he's such a good boy. Like he never complained, he never cried, never anything. The doctor was like, literally, you wouldn't even know that he had herniated disc, chronic herniated disc if he wasn't falling over because he didn't even like cry. He didn't show any signs of being in like, Pain. He's just so good. He's such a trooper and I love him so much. He's my little heart dog. He's been th with me through everything. I think this is why it's been so hard. In the last like couple of days, like everything, when my life has been chaotic, when I don't know like what's next, when like moving and like my constant has always been Lou for literally seven years. So I'm just happy that he's home, happy that he's on the mend and that he's okay and yeah that's pretty much it so i'm gonna show you guys him now and just pray for him send him more wishes and let's go give him some kisses i want to show you guys we have a little guard dog in front of lou he's always in front of him brother's crate say i yeah, want you to take him out so i could kiss him and snuggle but we can't baba this is Mr. Benjamin. So here is my Lou. Oh. Don't, don't get too crazy, my good boy. So you will see the incision down there. This is my baby. Oh, <laughs> you laying long. Careful with your shakes. Careful with your shakes, Baba. Brother has to always say hi. When we open the crate, here's my boy. He's doing so good. Little seven year old. See, we're on the mend, mama. If I get you so, so good. Oh, you want scratches. See, oh, I'm gonna do so good, mama. You see, you see, I'm gonna be so better. Love you, papa. Love you so much. Your brother loves you too. Look at him. <laughs> you want mommy to scratch your chest. Oh, you're so good. Such a good boy. Let's do this outro with the star of the show and his brother, Lou. Benji, move, puppy. Move, papa. Good boy. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you. Oh, careful, careful, careful.
Thank you for your concerns on my beautiful boy. Sent him well wishes. Make sure to like and subscribe to his channel, to my channel, just so that you can get, oh no, we're having an escapee. Oh my God, okay, like and subscribe so you can see updates and see how he's doing, bye, I love you.